Thrill Me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. It's Reviewing Man, reviewing what he can. Movies are his jam, so let's get twisted, man. It's review. Welcome into the Review at Rob show. Appreciate you joining on and hanging out on this week's episode. I'm going to be giving my thoughts on Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Long title there. That is the latest film in the Planet of the Apes franchise. I'm going to give you my spoiler-free thoughts on that film, as well as get some news in the horror realm, get some news in the DC realm, and some news all around the places in the movie. <laughs> um, so, again, appreciate you joining in. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, going to talk about that. Uh, it is PG-13. It's rated for... The- uh, intense sci-fi violence slash action it is now playing currently in the theaters. It is a runtime of two hours and 25 minutes. So be prepared to sit in the theater for a while. Uh, it is a sci-fi action adventure film and it's uh, director Wes Ball breathing new life into the franchise set several generations in the future following Caesar's reign in which apes are the dominant species living harmoniously and humans have been reduced to living in the shadows as a new tyrannical ape leader builds his empire one young ape undertakes a harrowing journey that will cause him to question all that he has known about the past and ba- uh, and to make choices to define a future for apes and humans alike. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes critics gave an 81%, which that's actually dropped a little bit more since uh, the film has come out. And audiences are at a 79%, while IMDb is at a 7.3 out of 10 left there, because Tyrannical Ape just reminds me of like dinosaurs and just thinking about a dinosaur ape and all that. Anyways, so what were my thoughts on the film? So I've like I've really enjoyed that last trilogy of Planet of the Apes films. I, I like what they did. I thought they were um, solid, solid films. So going into this movie, I was, you know, pretty, um, pretty excited for it. I wouldn't say it was like one of my most anticipated films of the year or anything like that. But I, I knew what I was getting into, and I think we all kind of know what we're getting into with these Planet of the Apes movies. Uh, two hours, thirty minutes, probably the longest movie I think I've seen in theaters this year. Which isn't a big deal. I mean, I've seen theaters long, um, movies longer than that. I've seen movies three hours and longer in theaters multiple times. So, not necessarily a long time. And I will say, uh, the two hours and thirty minutes doesn't ever really feel too long while sitting in the theater. I, I there are probably some moments where I'm like, maybe we didn't need to go this long here, but I, you know, nothing wasteful. By, uh, nothing truly wasteful by any means. Just extra. Uh, storytelling and building and all that stuff, which is fine for uh, especially an action adventure film. And again, I, I, like I said, if you've seen a Planet of the Apes movie, you kind of know what you're getting into with this one. Now, this film is set uh, in the future, um, further past uh, the last trilogy. So, the, season, the character of Caesar we got to know and love in the previous trilogy, not really, you know, a character that's going to be focused on in this one or anything to really go on. With that, uh, we're in a new world here, so we're mostly apes. So, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, mostly apes in this movie. Um, you know, humans are in the shadows, as the synopsis said there. Not going to deal too much with humans in this movie, which is fine, I think. You know, it's what a lot of people have asked for with Transformers movies or, you know, uh, the Godzilla movies or the Kong movies lately. It's like, get the humans out of here, man. We just want to see uh, the uh, the creatures and the, the robots and all that. Um but I like it. I, I, I like um, that it's uh, set in a different time period and kind of trying to build its own little story arc, even though it's connected to the previous films. It's still trying to build like its own kind of deal. I like the fact that they went that route and took that chance uh, to tell something interesting. And I will say it was pretty interesting. I think the film was enjoyable. I saw it in RPX, so, you know... It, it, you're going to want to see action movies in RPX just because of you know, sound and rattling of seats and all that stuff. But... Overall, I, I like what they put together with the movie. I had a good time um, watching it. It was uh, it was intriguing. It was very interesting. It gives you some heartfelt moments in there as well with the uh, the characters. Again, that's the thing with these you know CGI movies is like how are you gonna feel looking at a CGI animal? And it's all dependent on you know how good the CGI is and how good the 
uh, performances behind the CGI are. And, of course, they had some fantastic performances in this movie uh, behind the CGI, of course. Just, you know, a shout-out for cast-wise. Uh, you know, Kevin Durant playing uh, Proximus Caesar here. He's had uh, just a fantastic career already with, you know, CGI and stuff like that. And he does another great job here um, giving emotion and character to the CGI ape, right? Uh, and he was in, of course... Abigail earlier this year as a scene stealer as well. So he's having a pretty solid year. This is our uh, Freya Allen. I feel like this is the first time I saw her. She's the pretty much the main human you're going to see in this movie. And she does a really good job. I don't know what else I would have seen her in. Uh, trying to look real at The Witcher. Didn't watch it. Uh, the other War of the Worlds movie. Didn't watch it. Uh, you know, seems yeah, I don't, I don't recognize anything from her. Gunpowder Milkshake. I don't think I ever watched that. Um, so yeah, this is like a first time seeing her, but she was really good in it. But overall, like I mentioned, it's going to be mostly an ape film in Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And, you know, I, I think it's enjoyable, you know, for the, the two hours and 30 minutes of time, you know, you're going to be spending three hours in theaters here uh, to check out this movie based on, you know, you know, ads and all that stuff they played before the film. But I think it was a solid enough film. I don't think it's the best film in the, you know, the Planet of the Apes franchise by any means, but I think it's it's good enough. It was uh, intriguing enough to keep my attention throughout the whole time and uh story is the story's solid. You know, again, if we're living in a kingdom of Planet of the Apes, you're going to want to see mostly apes running things around here. You want to see how things are going there and you want to see the struggle of the humans now living in a world where they're not the primary you know, they're not, they're not number one anymore, right? So, I, I liked it. I liked it. I had a good time with the film. I, you know, top ten wise, I think it's in my lower half of the top ten at the moment. Um, did it make my top ten? I don't even know if it made my top ten, to be honest with you. But it's uh, solid enough, enjoyable enough, you know, good sci-fi action film. Again, if you've enjoyed Planet of the Apes films, you know what you're getting into. And you'll enjoy this one. I think it's, you know... It's it's good enough. It's got good action, you know. Good action will get you going there, and you know they'll definitely again. This is the start of a, a new trilogy here in the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. So, you know they they leave some intriguing options uh, to look for in the future with uh, this franchise and all that stuff. So, uh, be on the lookout. Go ahead and check that out uh, if you want to. It is in theaters currently for you to see. Um, me personally, always say go see a movie in theaters. Do you have to rush out to see it? Maybe not, but. Um, this is kind of a movie that does kind of build and play itself on uh, a big screen, right? So, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, if you saw it over the weekend, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments. But those are my thoughts on the film. Spoiler free, of course. All right, going from Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, let's jump into some DC news real quick, mostly because we didn't get to talk to them last week. didn't really have much to talk about. Um, so, of course, all the focus on the DC side now is with the start of the DCU films. Uh, run by Peter Safran and James Gunn, and uh, we got some fun stuff going on over there. So we got our first look at Superman's costume uh, with uh, David Corn so it, um in the role, and looks good. You know, it looks like a really cool costume. I know people have made their stupid jokes um, about uh, the fact that he's putting his boots on in the picture, but, you know, I... Um, I think the suit looks freaking awesome. I'm ex uh, already very excited about that film, but even more excited for that. And also like how James Gunn's doing things over there. He's keeping it pretty um, comic book accurate and working to keep things pretty comic book accurate. And uh, he's doing a good job with keeping, you know, the creators of comic books uh, into it because he just had hosted a whole lot of uh, comic book people over there on this set as well to check out and see how things are going and a lot of a lot of good press coming um a lot of good feedback if you will coming back from that uh, from the comic creators about not only Superman but what James Gunn's planning over there with the DCU so we've got that from this week that's happened uh, we also have that Frank Gillo, Grillo excuse me, and James Gunn have both posted announcing that Grillo will be joining Peacemaker Season 2. He'll be reprising his role as Rick Flagg Sr., which he'll be first um, playing or vo and using his voice for the Creature Commando show that's coming out later this year. And, you know, that's something else I love that James Gunn uh, announced that he was doing when they first announced the slate for the DCU and what they're doing going forward with um, 
the people who do the voice acting on the Creature Commando show will play the live action versions of those characters uh, when the time comes. And uh, Frank Grillo's time is coming with Peacemaker Season 2. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Obviously, a lot of excitement around Peacemaker as the first season was met with a lot of love. And I'm so excited for Season 2. Other bit of DC news we got was that uh, we got our first look at Batman Cape Crusader. This is the uh, show that will be, or the cartoon, the animated uh, deal, <laughs> that will be premiering on Prime Video August 1st. They will be releasing all 10 episodes. This is the reimagining of uh, the Batman mythology from J.J. Abrams and Matt Reeves and Bruce Timm. It is a build on the Batman animated series that was uh, previously going to happen at Max. But if you remember, people in charge over there at Warner Brothers and Max and all that stuff lost their freaking minds at some point and decided to cancel uh, a lot of things. And this is one of them. And, uh, but they did shop it around to other um, streamer options and... You know, Prime Video is the one that picked it up, so they'll they'll um, be doing that. They placed a two-season order for the cartoon, um, and again, the series will uh, debut later this year, August 1st, with the first 10 episodes, man. So, Batman animated series, much-loved th um, thing that people, again, loved. <laughs> um, so, it's good to see that in continuation and, you know, opportunities for that to, you know, get out there in the world. I think people really enjoy watching that again. So it'd be cool to see what they do with that. Uh, jumping over to the horror realm real quick. Um, this just madness around the Friday the 13th franchise continues. Like I, such a snake bit franchise, it seems at this point with, uh, just no idea of when or where or how, to be happy when it comes to that franchise because, you know, they finally it seemed like they got somewhere with that lawsuit and they're like, you can do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do it, you know, we're able to get things going here. And then they announced the A24 uh, Friday the 13th show on Peacock, uh, Crystal Lake, All right? And they're like, cool, man, we're finally getting something, it's going to be exciting, we're going to get to, you know, do something in that world again. And then news broke that uh, the show was canceled. Uh, out of nowhere, you know, the show got canceled. And we're like, what the hell? What's going on here? How was that the show get canceled? And then I want to say the next day, it's like, well, the show is not canceled. Not, not even the next day, the same day, a couple hours later, like, no, the show has not been canceled. It's still alive and well. And then we got more news on it stating that it is undergoing changes, right? So... Uh, the good news there is that it has not been officially and fully canceled by any means. It is just going in a different direction than the one that they were going in uh, when they started working on it. So, man, again, I just, you kind of wish the Friday the 13th France could get some kind of win. You know, we have a Friday the 13th coming in later this year. You know, people love watching those films every year during Halloween time. And then, of course, any time we get a Friday the 13th, people love watching those movies. So it's still a beloved, you know, franchise. But it's just a franchise that's been stuck in absolute limbo for the longest time. And, you know, people are just hoping for something to happen in that franchise. And then it was almost taken away again, but it's still kind of alive. And you're just hoping that, again, it doesn't get, you know doesn't actually get canceled um because uh, you know i just that's a wild it's, it's it's a wild wild time going on right now with that franchise man so hopefully they can get that all figured out it's good to know the show is still in the creation process so hopefully you'll we'll, uh, get to see the light of day another franchise has been snake bit when it comes to horror is the nightmare on elm street franchise which we haven't seen anything in over a decade for that franchise either, and that franchise will be celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of hopes and wants that maybe they'll announce that they're doing a new movie or something later this year, or that'll be at Halloween Horror Nights, or something that'll happen with that franchise, but, you know, at the moment, we know absolutely nothing about it. Um, I believe the rights to the f uh, franchise reverted back to the Craven family recently, so maybe they'll work on it and find something to do with, with that, but, um... Heather Langenkamp, who is obviously one of the big scream queens and final girls of all time, um, was uh, doing a recent Q&A where she cleared, uh, made it pretty clear that her interest in playing the role one more time hasn't waned over the years, saying, quote, In my imagination, I have several legacy sequels happening at the same time. Uh, she's a great character. How could, how could you say no? 
I just need uh, somebody to get that off the ground. Uh, she adds, especially considering Nightmare on Elm Street Part 7, Wes Craven's new nightmare, I do think there's a lot of really great opportunities for new and uh, excellent battles still to come, end quote. So she's still on to play in the role all these years later, especially after New Nightmare, she said there, which New Nightmare is fantastic, um, which is pretty funny because I did watch Dylan's um, Dylan's New Nightmare, or Dylan, Dylan's New Nightmare uh, YouTube fan film. Pretty good. Um, that's cool that she wants to play the role again. I like to see that when somebody wants to come back and play one of their classic roles. Uh, if it's done right, I, I you know, obviously was to support it now. Do you get Robert England back for that is the question, because I've heard um, him say in interviews that he's retired from playing the role. Uh, it feels like he can't do that role any longer. So if you get Heather Langenkamp back, will Robert England want to come back and do do it one more time? Um, it could be interesting. It could be... You know, cool to see just for, you know, fan service wise or nostalgia and all that. But I do kind of feel like I would want something new from that franchise to where it can continue on from there. Again, if Robert England's already said he's retired from the role, if you get him to come back for one movie, are you going to be able to continue to get him to come back to do more movies? Or is this just a, a one off deal? You know, it's it's interesting. Um, would you rather that's a that's a question. Would you rather Robert England and Heather Langenkamp come back for one more film, or would you rather them start a whole new franchise with Friday the 13th, or not Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and, you know, get that all going again to where you can look forward to more Nightmare on Elm Street films going forward? It's an interesting question, man, because I know the nostalgia is that you're going to want to see Robert England and Heather Langenkamp back, and maybe you know, doing one big more film uh, battle, or do you want to start a new franchise? So it's a question. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. All right, uh, going from there, and other news before we kick this thing out here, uh, the sixth installment of the MonsterVerse has officially been confirmed. So uh, if you've been wondering if there will be more Godzilla and Kong movies in that universe, there will be a six movie at least that has been announced and will um, happen at some point in time. It's unknown if it'll be a Godzilla movie or a Kong movie or something completely different. It is unknown at this moment, but they are making another film. Uh, if you want to know my thoughts on Godzilla X Kong, you can check out that review that came out earlier this year. But I say keep it going, man. It's, that's, that's those blockbuster fun time films where you go to the movie theater just for a good time. Get your popcorn or your candy or your soda or your water or whatever and just sit back turn your brain off and just watch some monsters beat the hell out of each other <laughs> so uh, you know if they want to keep making those movies man more power to them. why not all right and last bit of news here uh bob Iger, if you don't know who that is that is the ceo over at disney he during a quarterly earnings call uh detailed some plans for marvel to scale back and limit the number of projects per year saying, quote, we're, we're slowly going to decrease volume and go to probably about two TV series a year instead of what had become four and reduce our film output from maybe four a year to two or a maximum of three. Higer said, uh, we're working hard on what that path is. So this is the thing that's kind of been brought up with the comic book families all families all films all together uh, not just marvel but dc um is there too many is there a are people getting tired of the comic book films because you've seen them not succeeding too much i don't think it's necessarily them not succeeding or not being good it's more of a matter of you're spending way too much money on these movies you're not going to make that money back uh the movie theater business is not like it used to be you have a chance to make some money for sure i mean barbie did very very well last year so those possibilities are still there you just got to, I mean, Marvel's hit a patch of films that people have not wanted to see. And, you know, they saw them and they're like, oh, this is not good. And ever since Endgame, we're not liking anything they're doing, which is reality. And then, you know, me, I I love DC, but I know there are people out there who have not enjoyed the films that have come from them either. So it's it's the it's the deal where you're sitting back and you got to wonder, are they putting out too much? And... You know, DC and Marvel both only have one film coming out this year. On the DC side, you got Joker, and then out of Joker 2. And then in Marvel, you have Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, both films highly anticipated, both films expected to do very well. Um, 
but I, I kind of like the idea that we've only got like one. I could probably see two with, you know, us having 12 months in a year. You know, you want that summer film and then, you know, hopefully something later in the year to kind of catch some uh, people off to um, get a, like, get some box office before the movie a year ends. But not bad. I mean, so this year, Deadpool and Wolverine is the only movie they got. As far as TV goes, Agatha is the only one currently expected to release later this year. That's the... Uh, spin-off series of WandaVision. Um, that'll be hitting Disney Plus later this year. And then next year, they do have four films scheduled to come out with Captain America Brave New World in February, Thunderbolts in May, The Fantastic Four in July, and Blade in November. And I'll believe it when I see it when it comes to that Blade movie, because that movie's gone through more troubles than just about, just about as much trouble as the Flash film went through trying to make that. But it's 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 I think a good move, you know, calm it down a little bit, don't over, don't oversaturate the world, <laughs> and, and all these projects that you have going out there, you know, if you want to do two, two movies a year, I think that could work, man, um, I think that could work very well, you know, space it out, don't over rush yourself, don't over, uh, overdo it, and then, you know, put yourself in a position where you're putting out, um, quantity instead of quality right so again and all of this stuff is subjective you're gonna like what you're gonna like again i love a lot of the dc stuff that's come out there's people who don't like it a lot of people love the marvel stuff that's come out i don't like it you know so it's just it's all subjective you're gonna like what you're gonna like but yeah listen i've got no problem if they want to release a freaking movie every single month like that's i'll watch it right i'll be there to see it but i think in the overall grand scheme of things it probably is a really good idea to scale back and you know let some things breathe let them let the anticipation build don't confuse people with god i gotta watch this show now i gotta watch all three of these shows before this movie comes out this weekend so i'll be up to date with it and all that like that's that's too much right that's asking too much so you know good idea and we'll see how it all works out but uh, i am excited for deadpool uh, this July, for sure. And that is going to be it for this week's episode, man. So, quick review of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Spoiler free. You know, solid film. Again, let me know what your thoughts were on if you saw it. Uh, would you like to see the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise return for a one-off film with Robert England and Heather Langenkamp? Would you prefer it to be a franchise uh, return or start of a new franchise there? And what the hell's going on with Friday the 13th? <laughs> and then uh, DC-wise, Cape Crusader, fantastic uh, cartoon there. And then Frank Grillo joining uh, Peacemaker Season 2 as Rick Flagg Sr., and uh, MonsterVerse continues with uh, the sixth film announced, and Marvel is scaling back in the future. So there you go, man. Appreciate you joining in and listening to the show. We always have a good time doing the show, and I appreciate anybody that has a good time listening to the show. Um, and that'll do it for this week's episode, man. So hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the day, week, month, year. And as always, remember that happiness can be found even in the darkest of times, if one only remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next episode.